Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. So, after blogging Spirited Away last episode, which was, in my opinion, a real masterpiece of a Japanese animated film, today we're going to look into another film from Hayao Miyazaki's library. Now, most of you out there may have noticed that most of Miyazaki's films have a lot in common. Not only do they include fantasies, but they also include war, steampunk technology, magic, and flying vehicles. There are many films that have those things, like Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, as well as um, Porco Rosso, Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, and The Wind Rises. And... Thanks to a generous request by my friend Jackson Jones, I'm going to look into a high-flying adventure which takes audiences to an ancient kingdom in the sky. Released in Japan on August 2nd, 1986, the movie is Castle in the Sky. Now let's get started. Young orphan Shita and her kidnapper Colonel Muska are flying to a military prison when their plane is attacked by a gang of air pirates led by Captain Dola. Escaping from mid-air collision via a magic crystal around her neck, Shita meets fellow orphan Patsu, and the pair join forces to discover the mystical floating city of Laputa, while pursued by both Muska and the pirates who lust for the city's mid-raid treasures. So, what are my thoughts? Well, like most of Miyazaki's films, this movie is really amazing. But to further explain why I love the movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. This movie was the very first animated film by Studio Ghibli, following the release of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. It was animated by Tokuma Shoten, and it was distributed by Toei Kabushiki Kaisha. Miyazaki's earlier anime series, Future Boy Conan, featured a number of elements that he later adapted for Castle in the Sky. Conan and Lena, for example, were precedents for Pasu and Shita, and it had similarity to, to Shita's rescue by Pasu. Some of the characters and themes in Future Boy Conan set the blueprint for Castle in the Sky. The name Laputa is derived from Jonathan Swift's novel, Gulliver's Travels, wherein Swift's Laputa is also a flying island controlled by its citizens. Anthony Laiol feels that Miyazaki's Laputa, Castle in the Sky, is similar to Swift's Laputa where the technology superiority of the castle in the sky is used for political ends. Laputa is credited by Colonel Muska with having informed biblical and Hindu legends, thus tying the world of Laputa to our Earth and to Western European civilization. As do the medieval castle architecture on the ground, the Gothic and half-timber buildings in their village near the fort the Welsh mining town architecture, clothing, and ground vehicles of Patsu's homeland, and the Victorian ambience of the pirate ship. The anime also features the use of um, cuneiform script on Laputa's interactive panels and tombstones, and makes references to the Hindu epic Ramayana, including Indra's arrow. While the name Shita may be related to Sita, the female lead of Ramayana. Some of the architecture seen in the movie was inspired by a Welsh mining town. Miyazaki first visited Wales in 1984 and witnessed the miners strike firsthand. He returned to the country in 1986 to prepare for Lapita, which he said reflected his Welsh experience. However, for the technology of Laputa itself, 
the technologies, especially the flying machines, are an example of the retro-futuristic genre of steampunk. As for the animation, well, in my opinion, Life Spirit Away, Ponyo, and many of the other films that Miyazaki has made, the animation is absolutely amazing. I really like the different flying vehicles that are featured in this movie, and I think Muska's base looks very heavily secured and fortified, plus the town of Slag Ravine looks very steampunkish and, well, very reminiscent to European culture, but still very interesting. As for the titular castle in the sky, Laputa, well, it looks great. Not just with how the castle looks, but I also like that there are many ancient robots around. Plus, it's cool that the castle has advanced technology. As for the story itself, well, aside from being similar to Gulliver's Travels, in my eyes, it's a tad similar to Atlantis. But instead of finding a lost kingdom that is hidden underwater, it's finding an ancient kingdom that is hidden in the sky. And now, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. And, just to remind you guys, we're going to look into the English Disney dub. Let's begin with Patsu, voiced by James Van Der Beek. Whom I only remember from the first scary movie. In my eyes, Patsu is very active and very friendly. His personality strongly changes after he meets Shita and saves her many times. He's also very persistent and a true friend. As well as a clever person, as shown when he comes up with a plan to defeat or kill Muska. I also think that Patsu is a real natural when it comes to flying a glider. Our main character, Princess Shita, a.k.a. Lushita Toel Urlaputa, is voiced by Anna Paquin. Best known from Fly Away Home, Trick or Treat, The Good Dinosaur, and several of the X-Men films. Shita is the rightful princess of Laputa. She possesses an Ethereum crystal which can save her in times of danger. In my opinion, Shita is reserved and quiet. She, at first, insists on being on her own due to the danger her very company presents and, out of fear, causes damage to Patsu or his hometown though eventually concedes when Patsu vows to protect her. Despite her, her shy personality, Shita is polite, kind, and intelligent. Plus, I think she's very brave, and she's also a skilled cook. Next we have the villain of the film, Colonel Muska, a.k.a. Ramuska Paolo Laputa, voiced by Luke Skywalker slash Master Ericus himself, Mark Hamill. Muska's goal is to conquer Laputa by using the Ethereum Crystal. He believes that he's entitled to rule Laputa and use it as a powerful weapon to secure control over the Earth. In my eyes, Muska is really insane. Plus, he's very ruthless and threatening, and I can't believe that this guy would attempt to murder Sheeta by shooting her pigtails. Also, I think Mark Hamill's voice as Muska is pretty similar to his role as the Joker from the animated Batman movies. Next we have General Moro, voiced by veteran voice actor Jim Cummings. This guy is, well, abrasive and aggressive, 
and he likes being in control. He resents Muska's authority over the army and the Laputa project, and he is sometimes suspicious of Muska's actions, such as Muska's methods of dealing with Sheeta after her capture. Plus, I think Jim Cummings' voice is absolutely amazing when he's acting very authoritative, kind of like when he was Razul in the Aladdin movies. Our next character is Uncle Palm, voiced by Richard Dysard. Palm is a kind old man who looks out for everybody in the movie. Despite the fact that he's not in too much of the film, I do like the scene where he meets Patsu and Shita in the mines and tells them how the rocks in said mines are from the same material as Shita's crystal. Next is Captain Dola, an air pirate voiced by Cloris Leachman, who's been in another Miyazaki film, Ponyo. But she's also best known for being in Young Frankenstein, a troll in Central Park, Annabelle's Wish, and of course, My Little Pony the Movie from 1986. In the movie, Dola is interested in the treasures of Laputa. To me, Dola can be bossy, greedy, and selfish, and she did start off as an antagonist, but later she is revealed to be a soft-hearted person, and she even, well, grows fond of Shita and Patsu. Dola is also brave and resourceful, which has helped her become a successful and respected air pirate over her long lifetime. Plus, to me, Dola is one of many characters I can sort of imagine my friend Lynette acting as. Due to her tough pirate personality. Also, I think that Dola and her crew are pretty similar to the Albed from Final Fantasy X and X-2. And finally, we have Dola's sons, Charles, Louis, and Henry, voiced by Michael McShane, Mandy Paddington, and Andy Dick. To me, these guys are kind of silly and immature at times, and they usually spy and flirt with Sheeta, but they do respect Dola greatly and always follow her orders, although... They often forget to call her Captain, and just call her Mom instead. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Castle in the Sky is another masterpiece in Hayao Miyazaki's library. The animation is amazing, the story is very interesting, the main characters, Patsu and Shita, are great, and they have a nice friendship chemistry together. Dola was a surprising supporting character, and Muska is a really messed up and insane villain. Also, this movie is very serious and mature at times, especially with the use of child abduction and gunplay. Plus, the use of the flying scenes, the steampunk technology, and the airships are very awesome. Plus, this movie does have some humorous moments, too. So, I give this movie a full 100%. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Be sure to join me for my next vlog, because next it'll be time to return to Burke to rock the dragons. Mustang Power.